good to see you. Welcome to Box to Box. How are you doing? Thank you very much. I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to come to America, play two games. So I'm uh, really excited. Well, we're looking forward to you coming stateside as well. Have you ever been to the States before? And what are you most looking forward to with coming to these two cities? Yeah, I've been quite a few times to New York, uh, uh, Miami once. So, so yeah, I've, I, I've seen a little bit of America, but uh, I've never been to Chicago and Detroit. So I'm looking forward to see what, what kind of cities they are and playing hopefully two good games. Well, get ready for the weather because it's about to be a complete shock to your system like preseason is. I know when you go on vacation, you're off season, you can relax a little bit, but now you're back in preseason. How's the body feeling? Yeah, last week I was uh, in Mallorca and I was training a little bit there and it was so hot. So, so yeah, I can imagine it's going to be some, some tough games with the heat over there. But um, I feel good. It's the first week back in. You always need to get the legs going again. Feel a little bit tired, but uh, hopefully it will be better. Well, it's great to see you back. And obviously, thank you so much for joining us on the show. We've got a ton of questions for you. So I hope you've got about an hour's time to answer <laughs> all of our questions. Just kidding. I want to begin with the main man, Roy Hodgson. Obviously, I followed his career as a manager throughout, um, all the way back to the Switzerland days. And then obviously getting the opportunity to play with him and what he did for Crystal Palace last year, nothing short of sensational. Clearly made an impact on the team. But what separates him from other managers? What makes him so good? Yeah, now I work with him. Uh, yeah, only three four months. So, so I, I had I had a really good um, impression of him. Um, he just keeps it simple. He gives the players confidence. Something we we lacked a little bit at at that time when he got in. So, so yeah, he's he's been really great. We had some good results with him the last ten games in the Premier League. So, so I'm really looking forward to the to the new season. Hopefully, we can continue those results and and build from there. Yeah, it was a really solid end to the Premier League season last year, wasn't it, under Hodgson. What are your expectations for this Premier League campaign with Crystal Palace? No, I think actually Roy was saying in the media we want to finish in top 10, so I like to, to hear that. It's a, it's, a, it's a good statement, and I think we have the team to do it. We have some good, hungry young players who can perform at a high level. Um, so we just need to, to be more consistent in our in our season and uh, then I think we can we can achieve something good this season. There's no doubt that the Premier League is one, if not the most competitive league domestically in all of Europe, if not world football. You have experience obviously playing across multiple countries. Obviously Denmark, I recognize the Netherlands, France also, but now being in the Premier League, what separates the Premier League from everybody else? I mean, why is it such a, a watchable league? Why is it such a demanding league and how difficult it can be? Um, yeah, yeah, I played in Holland, Italy, France, and now, now England, and, and every league is so different. Holland is a lot about possession. Uh, Italy is a, is a lot really tactical, go into the de details. Uh, France, a lot of box to box. Um, yeah, so so I think Premier League is a little bit mix of everything, uh, but with yeah, it's just the best players in the world. There's no easy games. It doesn't matter who you're playing against. It's it's gonna be tough. Um, where in some some other countries maybe you have uh, some games during the season where it's gonna be an easy win, but there's uh, yeah, that's not the case in the Premier League. It's it's always it's always hard. So. Mm -hmm. That's also when you see some, some surprises sometimes. Um, it's, yeah, it's just how it is here. So that's what it's like on the pitch there. But playing in all those different leagues means you've lived in so many different places as well all over the world. Obviously, we're biased. Well, maybe not Ian so much, but me, I love London. So apart from London, what's been your favorite <laughs> city to live in? Uh, when I was playing in Sampdoria, I was living in Genoa uh, at the coast in Italy. It's an amazing place. So I think, I don't think you can get a much better, how to say, life there uh, in, term, in terms of the life, good food, good weather, and, and the people are really nice. So I really enjoyed being there. I love that. Serie A, good football, good places to live, nice weather. 
I could think of worse places to yeah. be, that is for sure. Yeah. And it's not always easy for individuals. Obviously, it's spoken about making these big transfers. You being Scandinavian, I'm sure you learn English at a very young age. But when you go play in France, Italy and other countries, including the Netherlands, you've also got a culture shock. It's a culture change. So how many languages do you speak? And um, where did you enjoy the most outside of Italy? Because Poppy wants to know all about the food in Italy and the <laughs> lifestyle in Italy. But I can only imagine that obviously learning your trade in the Netherlands would have been a great experience for you as well. Did you have to learn the languages in each of these countries? Um, yeah, I was 17 when I went to the Netherlands. And I think for Danish people, it's quite easy to, to learn Netherlands. Um, and, and, I, and I learned it quite quick. So now, yeah, I speak I speak fluently Dutch. Uh, it, it, in Italy, the manager didn't speak one word English, so I kind of had to learn Italian. <laughs> um, I had a lot of lessons, and 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 I had to learn that. So so, it, it's always nice to to learn a, a couple of languages. And France, I was only there for one year, but I understand the most of it. We had a lot of French French players in our team now, so I can practice a little bit with them still. So. Yeah, I can speak a few languages now, so it's quite nice. I think that's important, obviously, when you're learning the culture, but also to get acceptance from the, the teammates around you that you're learning the language, you're at least trying to work on the culture. I did the same when I went to Germany. Um, for the first six months, it was great because we were winning games, and as soon as we started losing games, the coach was like, get out of here! Learn the language so we can communicate! So he could pretty much shout at me in German, which is understandable. Um, you have a lot of superstars in your roster right now. Wilfred Zaha is one of my favorite players in the Premier League. What he does every time he he picks on the ball as he gets me off my seat. What is he like? Obviously, working with him so closely over the last couple of years. Um, what is he like as a player, as a human being, and what are you expecting from him with this upcoming season? Um, no, Wilf is, is a character. He's a uh, fantastic player. Most uh, first and foremost, um, he's a good personality. He's demand a lot from from his surroundings, from his teammates. Sometimes he can seem a little angry, but uh, that's just how he is. I don't think you take that personal. Um, but yeah, like you said, he gets you off your seat. He's he's exciting to watch. He's taking players on every time he receives the ball, and and that's what you want from your winger. You want him to create chances. You want him to to score goals, and and he's been providing with a lot of assists and goals for the last couple of seasons. So I really enjoy play with him. Now he's out of contract, but. Yeah, hopefully he will he will resign. We we have to wait and see what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. No doubt we enjoy watching him as well. I want to ask you about another one of your teammates, though, because obviously we have a massive following for the U.S. men's national team players. I know you've played with quite a few over your career. Uh, you're currently playing with Chris Richards. Give us a bit of insight into what he's like as a teammate. No, Chris is a really funny character. He's uh, he's always with a smile on his face. He's a, he's a really good player, a good guy, and, and uh, I talk uh, I talk a lot with Chris. So uh, yeah, he's he's really nice to be around and and uh, giving every everything on the pitch always. So really good guy. Yeah, I'm sure he paid you a lot of money to say that for. <laughs> Hopefully, he's uh, giving you some recommendations as well. America America's just heard America. that answer right there, <laughs> so uh, he will thank you for that one as well, Joaquin. Um, Let's just finish off with your own personal goals. You just mentioned there that trying to get into the, the top 10 in the Premier League would be a goal, um, potentially in a European place, which would be a tremendous achievement for Palace. Um, but what about you individually? You go into the season, do you set personal goals? Um, you obviously want to stay healthy and, and play as many games as you possibly can. But what are your own personal targets for this season? Um, I think it's difficult to set personal goals uh... I'm 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 a team player. I'm a defender. I'm independent of my of I'm a, how you say. I, I need my teammates to to play well. So so I first first and foremost think about the team and and top ten would be a good achievement. Um, I don't have any goals about clean sheets or, or goals in, in 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 that way. But of course I would like to to score a couple of goals. That that's always nice and something that that i can improve on um but first and foremost i just wanna i just wanna play every game i wanna perform uh the best i can um and and yeah that's 
that's actually my, my, my target. Yeah. Great. Well, it's back already, isn't it? I feel like we've blinked and the off-season has finished. You play Bromby in your pre-season, a friendly wait. tomorrow, and then, of course, coming stateside, which we're looking forward to. Joachim, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck this Premier League season. All the best.